So I just wanted to come on and give you an update. <clears throat> Again, I'm not doing this to ask for sympathy or anything like that. I am just trying to chronicle or yeah, chronicle or, or whatever, categorize or observe, observe the emotions I'm having. And again, the purpose is to help anybody who might be at a loss as to how to handle the difficult emotional situation to, to give them, I'm sorry, um, to help them, to show them like, it's like a, the variations are normal and how to handle things that like, or how I'm handling them. And that's, let's, it's like a, it's like a, it's a great experiment, right? Like it's, let's just see how this girl who is dealing with a breakup for the first time after a long depression can handle it and what she's going through, what she's doing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right now. The point is my feeling has changed. Um, I don't really feel sick. It's still like a stomach thing, but I'm just sad. <sighs> and I have to remember to re relax my shoulders. And the sad feeling is just like a, I mean, it's like located here, but it's not really a, a physical sensation right now. It's just like a, I mean, you all know that feeling, right? That all like that, oh, come on, really? That, that feeling. And it's okay because it's all part of the the process. But I'm sad. I'm really sad. It's interesting to to be observing your emotions. I really am like every time something like a, a, something changes internally, some emotion shifts, something happens. Whether whether it's like whatever it is, I'm I I am I am I can feel myself bracing myself for it, and it's not what it used to be. It's not I didn't I don't have to I don't have to brace myself for it anymore. It's not a sock in the gut. shoulders. Relax. I don't have much else to tell you. <sighs> Just that, oh, okay. Like I don't feel like doing anything. I, I should be, I, I got some more work done and I'm happy work, with the work that I did. Although I should have been able to get more done today. <sighs> I'm not happy about having a double chin. Um, I need to start working out. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, what I really need to do is so there's an emotion. It's like a, it's like a, I, I, I don't know. It's just like this sad, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like this thin and just entered my heart and kind of went down towards my stomach. A really sad thing. This is a really sad thing. Like I don't. And again, like this is not sympathy. This is I'm not looking for that. I'm just trying to <clears throat> document the emotions of a breakup as is happening to me but in hopes that it speaks to somebody else. It's sad. I'm sad. And um, again, I just have to let it be. It's okay that I'm sad. It's okay. 
sometimes. Because it really... It really hurts to think about my life without him. Like, it is real this time. And, you know, friends try and help, and they say, like, oh, well, you never know in the future. I mean, even he... He wants to believe that... I mean, both of us want to believe that there's a, some chance in the future. And... The only chance I can think if that makes logical sense. And I honestly, like, I don't know what could happen. No. Alright. Learning moment. I'm not gonna go down that road. I'm not gonna go down the road of, like, what if, or what, what would have to change. Because that's trying to change the outside again. <sighs> and it's not gonna happen. I just, I know he's going through a hard time in his life right now, and I'm really worried about him. I mean, it's a hard time in my life too, but he's got a lot going on. And, um, like on top of it to lose this relationship, it's, it's really hard for him. Like, it's a lot. And he's alone, and I don't. I don't like thinking about that. He, um, he moved to this area about four years ago. Three and a half, four. And, uh, he's actually, he was living in New Jersey. He, uh, let's not go into specifics. Let's just say he came to this country when he was 18, and he's, an, he's a citizen. But he moved up to Boston not that long ago, and uh, didn't really know anybody here. And then he and I, excuse me, he's a quiet person, and he doesn't, you know, he was out of his element, out of, he, back where he was living, there was, um, there was a, a community of, of people from, you know, his country that shared his culture. So he came up here and I mean, we became friends within a few months and like, honestly, like it's like five and a half days now. Like this is like one of the longest times we've been out of touch since, since then. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, so we spent a lot of time together and the short, the short, it's not short anymore. The story is that he doesn't have, he never really had the chance to make a lot of friends, especially when COVID came and we couldn't really go out. But, um, but we always, we always, it didn't matter. Like <laughs> we could, we had like a studio apartment during COVID and we were on top for a long time and we could. I must stop. We enjoy each other's company. Let's just put it that way. And he is, through various circumstances, not, does not have much of a support system here. That could have been the, that could have been the statement I, I just made instead of going into any story. He doesn't have a big support system here. And I... I worry about him because I know how, I know how sad he is, I know how upset he is, and I know he's alone. And that makes me really sad and I worry about him. And then it's like, but, like how are you not supposed to worry about someone you love, right? Like. He's, um. And I'm, I, I'm supposed to observe my thoughts and not get involved with them, right? This is a hard one not to get involved with. Because not only is it very emotionally charged for me, but also I feel 
guilty not being worried about it, not being concerned about it. As though it doesn't matter if I'm not concerned about it. And it matters a lot to me. I don't want to ignore it. I'm, I'm, this is a con this is this is a tough one. I shouldn't I shouldn't we're not saying shouldn't right now. I thinking about him being alone and upset and not having anybody is not useful. It doesn't help me and it doesn't help him. <laughs> so there's no good reason to do it. <laughs> but it matters. It's a big deal. <laughs> and I feel like if I don't want him sitting there with no one else thinking about him. And I know other people are. I know people are. I know his family is. But like, he matters. And he's alone. And I just, I can't stop thinking about how he's feeling. And that really makes me want to call or text. It really does. It's not that feeling though where I feel like I'm gonna like that panicky feeling you get when you when you want to call or text. <laughs> so that's good. That's an improvement. I need my tissues. Where are my tissues? <sighs> my room is a fucking mess right now. Excuse my language. I know. I know. I'm from Boston though and we swear. <sighs> like I just want it. I want him to be okay. And I want to text but it's not. Oh, it's not useful for me but it's not useful for us because we can't, there's, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do to make him feel better. And I know he's suffering. He's a shy person. He's not good at go going out and making new friends. One of the, I would, I would say one of the worst parts, but it's not really, <laughs> but it's not nice, is that like, in the past three years, whenever I'm upset, he's the one to comfort me. And whenever he's been upset, I've been there for him. And we don't have that anymore. And it's not panic. It's vaguely located in this area. I don't know what, I can't describe. 
it's not a physical sensation right now. It's just like... Okay. Relax. Breathe deeply. And just, we'll just watch it, right? We don't get involved with it. We don't get involved. We just let it be. I think I'm gonna go do some crying. And that's okay. Don't worry everybody, I know that I know that when you see someone crying or in pain, you want to help. I'm being helped. I'm helping myself. I'm doing a good job. So don't worry. I don't, what I want is to hear if this is helping anybody. <laughs> I want, I don't, I'm not, I don't want sympathy. I want, I want this to be instructional or revelational or like comforting or something. I'm doing this for me, <laughs> but for you. I'm gonna go cry for a little while. I'll observe it. So what I plan on doing is crying, observing it, feeling the sensations, feeling the feelings, relaxing, and observing it. Not holding my breath, just aware of what's going on and not trying to stop it. That's what I'm gonna go do. So, I'll see you guys later. And I am choosing to have a grateful night. This isn't nice, but I'm grateful for it. <laughs>